Hi there, welcome. For those people or who already know about what I'm going to show you, please skip forward and go and check the moulds out that I'm casting. Uh, they're done? Right, okay. This is for the people that are, if you're going to dabble into casting, just a few of the items that you actually need to actually get yourself started. The first thing I'll start with, the most important, is casting powder. I should put that one there. Uh, the first one is a Herculite 2. Now this is a good all-round casting powder. It will do all of your moulds. But saying that, I do use two casting powders and this is the Crystalline R. This is a porcelain finish plaster which is extremely hard. I use this for the more delicate pieces like tiles, uh, slates, little things like that so they're both good quality uh, casting powders i will put a link in the description uh, where you can actually get these from uh, you can actually get these off ebay but other countries i don't know what, which country you're you're in you might have to find an equivalent to it right that is the main main thing that's the most important i'll stress that now is to get a good quality casting plaster to cast in rubber silicon moulds. Plaster of Paris is no good, don't even think about it, or decoration filler or anything like that. You will not get good results. Right, moving along, what we have is a set of digital scales. The set of digital scales is for measuring weight wise your casting powder. Most, well, all casting powders will come to either a, a two to one ratio or a three to one ratio, which is one milliliter of water to two grams of casting powder. So you need a set of scales to measure that out accurately. Uh, the next thing, well, well, I'll move these things in because I think a lot of them are out of shot. A spoon, well, the spoon's for fishing up your powder. There's nothing too technical about that. There isn't nothing too technical you need. A paintbrush, that is for mixing your plaster and also for painting pigments or paints into your moulds. That's a basic thing. A basic scraper, any shape or size, this is for cleaning off the tops of your moulds. We move along, mixing containers. These can be yogurt pots, they can be anything you like, as long as you can mix them. We also have a disposable syringe. This is a 10 mil syringe. Uh, you'll find that most of the moulds, you won't go over 12 mil. Actually, this is it goes up to 12 mil, this one does. They're very cheap to get hold of, and you will get an accurate mix by using something like this. Next to it, we have a piece of plastic. This is to actually put your moulds on. I'll bring a mould down. The moulds are quite flexible and soft. This is just so when you cast, you can cast into your mould and you can actually move it away, put it somewhere safe to dry, because if you pick it up, as you can see, you're going to end up breaking your parts, damaging them, and things like that. Put that mould back in its place. Now, another thing that you need is a plastic container and some rinse age. Now the rinse age aid is for soaking your moulds in before you cast in them. You will do a small amount into their water, put your mould in into it and soak it then partially, partially dry it off before you start casting. The rinse aid helps release, well it breaks the water tension in the plaster and helps release the air bubbles from the face of the mould so you do get decent parts. Now, uh, colours. There are already done, there's two videos out. One on pigments, which is, I use the Vallejo pigments and there's also one out on paints. 
I use the Vallejo paints. It's just that that's what I have to hand. There's two videos out. The choice is yours on what colours and how you do it. If you're going to do a lot of casting, I would recommend pigments. If it's going to be little bits and pieces and you don't want to buy pigments and you've got paints in your uh, box, you can use paints quite easily and just as good as pigments. So that is your colouring. We move on now. Uh, I have a small vibrating table which I made myself. There is a video out how to actually make this particular vibrating table. It shows you, tells you all the parts that you need, how to do it, everything. If you don't want to build a vibrating table, you can actually get away with using a piece of plastic and getting a piece of foam rubber or sponge, placing it on, tapping it with your finger. That will do just as well. Uh, failing that, you can actually use a compressor. Start your compressor up on your board and just gently lay it on top of the compressor. The vibrations will do exactly the same job as well. So there's three options there if you require to for a vibrating table. Moving on, the final thing, and I will stress this because this has caused quite a few marital breakups, is I'll just move the camera slightly. Is a container to wash up in. Uh, you need a container to wash up in for the simple reason is when you mix the plaster with the water, the water is only a medium to hold the plaster and the plaster will sink and harden under water. So if you wash your cups up, your moulds, that will go down the drain and it will block your sink up straight away. So if you get yourself a largest container that you can actually put stuff, wash stuff up and get it cleaned up. So that's it. So next up is how to cast the moulds. All right, hi there guys. Now uh, we're gonna be doing the Victorian archway. Absolutely beautiful mould, really is. I really do like this mould. So, without no further ado, we'll get it straight into the rinse aid. Now, I say it every time because I can't remember what uh, measurements we're going to be using on this. I think I'm going to go for a 15 uh, to be on the safe side. So, we're going to do a 2 to 1 ratio, 15, that makes it 15 mils of water and 30 grams of uh, casting powder. So we'll get the water first. That's the water. And my apologies if you hear any noises in the background. It's a beautiful sun, sunny Sunday afternoon and we've got children out in the garden. So I apologize for that. Right. Get 30 grams of uh, casting powder. And I'm using the Herculite. Herculite 2. Very good, very good casting powder. And I will stress again decent casting powder. Use, get your measurements correct. Keeps the cost down and also it helps the flow. We're going to be casting these in white, so we don't need to put any colour with the, them at all. Uh, the simple reason is most of the arches were, they were either painted white. Well, yeah, I think they were. But you, if you want, you can add a tiny bit of uh, colour to them if you want. Uh, a bit of, uh, make them sandstone colour. That would look pretty cool. And uh, I hope I've got enough here this now. So it's unusual for me to be doing a straight mix. Right. I think 
15 I think so I'm well over the top we cut that down to about 10 I think and we can that gives us plenty of scrape off right excuse me while I do my washing up we have to be domesticated to me so I shall put you on pause we'll come back in a few minutes and we'll skim the top off okay it's been about five six minutes and we're just going to use the scraper and take the top off and it's just just starting to go just how I like it actually a little bit of water And that finishes off really nice. Okay, that's it. Now we'll leave them to dry fully and we'll be back. We'll turn them out and we'll have a closer look at the parts. Okay, time to take uh, these out of the mould. Let me tease them out. Go. I will do some uh, close-up pictures as uh, people have been asking for that because you don't really get to see the parts. I've not actually built anything as yet using these archways but uh, I shall definitely do something. Uh, I don't know what quite but uh, we will. Last one out. They all come out beautiful. And the little plinths. I love the little plinths. They really are you know, sweet. <laughs> we got the large plinth doing the double. And then kind of a single. And then we've got the keystones. Two of them. another one and also we get two different little finials to finish the actual top off like so and lastly but not least are the two little finishing pieces that go on the back and that one's got a little bit of air trapped into it very naughty of you, Simon. But there you go. That's the uh, Victorian arches. And like I say, I shall tag a few pictures on so you can see what they look like close up. Okay, parts from this particular mould. You've got the two arch sections without a cut off. And then here we've got two arch sections with a cut off. This is so they can be actually joined together to make a double arch. We also get uh, plinths, two single ones and one double one. These are t we get two keystones, and also we get four finials, one with a raised surface and one with an insert. And these are finial caps that actually go on top there to finish it off. Now I should put you on pause, and I've assembled some so you can have a look. Okay, the first one I'm going to take a look at, this is just a single arch. You've got your two uh, plinths, one either side. You've got your two arches coming up to the centre. You've got the keystone behind that. And then you've got your uh, finial and finial cap on, on the top of that. And that makes up just a single arch. And it is a very, very nice little arch. And uh, we'll move on now to the other. Okay, we now move on to the double arch. Now, uh, the center two arch parts are the ones with the cut off, so they actually join nicely in the middle there. 
that is actually sat on the large uh, plinth, then the two shorter, well, the two ordinary arches go either side. If you wanted to make it even more arches, you just use more of the, the cutoffs and just keep doing arch to arch to arch. So you could do a very lot of arches, as many as you like, actually. Uh, this side sat on the two smaller plinths, like I said, and the large one in the middle. Uh, keystones sit at the top of the arch, that's to actually form it up and finish it. Uh, we've got the finials on, I've got a raised one that side, and a one with the insert with the finial capping. So, that's a look at uh, the Victorian arch. Thank you very much for joining me, and hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.